Hey guys, it's time to update you on my smart home tour for 2024. Got some new smart locks, shades, different automations going on and home kit buttons. Plus I have a new garage door opener. It's known as the action button on the iPhone. Also got some new HomeKit Secure video cameras, light strips, and this year we even put solar panels on the roof. Gonna go through all of that, over 100 HomeKit devices in the home behind me. But I'm gonna show you that action button again because it's pretty cool. This one is an if statement shortcut, checks if the garage is open or not, and then performs the opposite action. All right, so let's go in through the garage again. If you wanna learn how to do those kinds of shortcuts, toggle automations with HomeKit devices, I'll link that video above and in the description. All right, here in the garage, I still have my Eve water guard. This has a little like rope thing that goes down to the floor and if it ever gets wet, I get an alert. I still have the Acara G2H HomeKit Secure video camera in here. It also acts as an Acara hub, but I like being able to see in my garage when I'm not home. Still have the Maris garage door opener adapter, which works with pretty much any garage door opener you might have. Yes, I now have a ton of boxes because I get like sent stuff. And my switches here in the garage are still the trusty Maris switches. They've done really well, but one of the big changes this year is I'm tired of light switches not responding. And so I'm switching more and more to the Lutron Diva and Clara switches, which I'll show you in a second. Another update this year is the smart lock here on the exterior door. This is the Acara U100. It works with home key, fingerprint sensor, keypad, and kind of has a hidden physical key slot. It's pretty good, but I actually did a whole roundup of every home key lock here in the US this is not exactly my favorite anymore. I'll show you that when we get to the rear patio. Coming inside, you'll see that light actually turned on as I open the door. That's because of one of my home automations. This is one of the new Lutron Diva dimmers that I switched out. This was a Belkin switch, now it's Lutron. And I have a contact sensor at the bottom of the door. That's actually the Acara contact sensor. Whenever this door opens, it turns on the light. And then this light will turn off a few minutes later. That Star Wars puzzle, that was a 2000 piece puzzle we did last Christmas. So I'll come back to my home theater setup, which has remained pretty much the same, but hue sync box, gradient light strip, things like that. Now here in my kid's room, I have some nano hexo lights here behind my son's desk. And the switches here are still light and ceiling fan switches from Lutron. They've been super solid. Another change in this room is around the holidays, we do some lights and these holiday lights are going into some smart plugs. That's a Maris smart plug down there. Got a Wemo around the other side. And uh, we do have a new addition to the family this year. It's actually a snake, but I do have an Acara E1 camera over there, which uh, gives us a little snake view. Did the whole dedicated review on that camera. I'll put the link down in the description. All right, coming back out to the living room, we'll go into my studio in just a second. I got this uh, tidbit little screen here, which is kind of cool. You can have different pieces of information on it, like the moon phase. And you can also put your YouTube subscriber and view count on the screen. So, you know, had to do that. Now down here, I've tested many robot vacuums this year. This is the D-Bot X2 Omni and the D-Bot T20 Omni. I have a whole video comparing these two directly, but my favorite's the T20. If you're looking for a robot vacuum slash mop, that's my favorite. I would say go with that one. Another addition this year is a brilliant smart control panel. I did a whole video on this, but it's pretty cool. The one use case I found really useful is actually for music. It can control all the Sonos devices throughout the house. So I have my Sonos bedroom, living room, I have Sonos moves out on the patio and a pair of 1SLs. That's actually my favorite part of this smart panel. And one update on the Brilliant panel, I didn't know this before, but if you go to the music and you have Sonos speakers connected, you can actually group them together here in the Brilliant panel. So I've actually grouped all the speakers out on my patio together and then I can play to them here with the Brilliant panel. On the other side of this wall is my Ecobee thermostat. We put it in when we first moved in over a year and a half ago. It's been super solid. It's not the new premium version that's real fancy, but this thing is super solid, does everything I want it to. And of course, Lutron switches here, Lutron dimmer, ceiling fan control, and another dimmer for the lights here in the room. Oh, also in this corner, I forgot to tell you, this is actually a Govi lamp. I believe it's Govi. If it's not, you'll see the title up here somewhere. But this I actually have turn red whenever I'm filming. And so when I run a filming scene, this actually lets my family know that I'm recording. Now, if we go into the studio, this is where all the magic happens. This is where I film all my content here in the room. This is what it looks like when I'm just doing some office work, but I can actually run a scene. I can ask Siri, but I'll just tap this video blue. It turns off my ceiling fan and ceiling fan light. It starts closing the blackout shades that are against the window here in the studio. It turns on my filming lights, the Elgato Keylight Airs and an Amaran 200X. And I have colored lights, including this Philips Hue sign floor lamp. And I have my Eve Flare, Hue Bloom, and then my Gig Acoustic sound panels behind me. Also I have hair light up there. The Elgato Keylight Airs are actually on Wemo smart plugs, also HomeKit. I do that so they actually just turn on with the scene and I don't have to mess with the Elgato app. 
And when I run a scene, if I'm filming, now you'll see that lamp out here in the family room turns red. I also have one in the living room. This way, if I'm recording, everybody can just see this red light. And then when I turn off my filming scene, the lamp turns off. Now I got a bunch of stuff in here. This is my Mac Pro pillow. But here's, of course, the desk, a couple podcast microphones and all that, Blackmagic 810 Mini Pro. But one of the things I keep amassing are HomeKit buttons. Here I have a Flick HomeKit button, the Akara button, the Wemo stage. And yeah, they all do something. So if I'm done recording, I know the Akara button is kind of my recording button. I can double click and it turns off all my filming lights and that runs my I'm done recording scene, opens my blinds over here in the studio. You'll see the Elgato key light airs turned off as well as my key light, ceiling fan turned back on and I'm good to go. I can also just tap this once and that actually defaults to my filming blue scene. So now you'll see all the filming lights turn back on. The blackout shade is lowering. That's an Eve motion blind and all my colored hue and Eve lights turned on. So I can be ready to record in about 30 seconds just by hitting those buttons. And if I'm done for the day, this flick button, one click puts it in my office work mode. Two clicks is I'm done for the day, turns off all the lights here in the studio. And one other update for the studio, I actually put the Akara T1 light strip hiding behind this bookshelf. And so I can control that, turn it on or off. And then I have the colors match with whatever scene I'll be recording with. Now, speaking of home theater, I actually have a secret button here in the little pocket of the sofa. This is a Philips Hue button, and this is our ready to watch a movie button. If I click this, it runs our family movie time scene, shuts off the lights here in the family room, turns on the Hue sync box and the Hue gradient light strip. Plus I have two Hue plays on the entertainment center and we're ready to watch a movie. Now, typically I actually like running my scenes through a shortcut here in the family room. And I have one that says, watch something. I choose which room we're watching in. And if I click family room, now you'll see it'll set the mood again, but because this is a shortcut, I can add Apple TV commands. And so it turns on the Apple TV with that shortcut. And I can start the Hue sync box actually syncing the lights through that shortcut. So it all happens with one tap and you can see the Apple TV control opened up on my phone. So everything is ready to go with one tap. Better than just a HomeKit scene, it's a HomeKit scene within a shortcut. And there you can see now the Hue Syncbox lights are syncing, and all I did was press one shortcut. Just to give you an idea, this is what that shortcut looks like. It has a menu where I choose what room, and if it's the family room, I wake the family room Apple TV, set my family room movie HomeKit scene, turn on my Philips Hue Syncbox, which Philips Hue has actions specifically for shortcuts, start syncing the lights, and then show the remote control for family room on my iPhone. One tap and I'm good to go. Then I can choose my done watching shortcut. I choose which room that I'm done watching in. That actually turns off the TV, turns off the hue lights behind the TV, and turns on the ceiling fan very dimly because we probably just got done watching a movie and everyone's about to go to bed. Love those shortcuts with the HomeKit scene combination. All right, let's turn on the main lights here in the family room one more time. Now on this side of the family room, I actually have a Leviton scene controller here. So I can actually run my family movie scene from this button. I can also do the morning scene, which turns on all the lights. This also has the closet light on, but instead of turning it on, I actually have a motion detector. And so when I open that door, the light turns on. And that's because of this hue motion sensor right here. It detects whenever the door opens, turns on that light, and then turns it off five minutes later. All right, coming into the master bedroom. See, I have some uh, world art there. One of my favorite devices is still the Eve light strip. Have the light strip behind the bed frame. It's actually mounted with these little metal clamps holding it on. Helps because on wood, that stickiness doesn't really stick. And of course I have different scenes with different colors for the headboard, which is really cool. And also the switches in this room are still Lutron, dimmer, dimmer, and ceiling fan control. Now one of the additions this year was Era 300s as rear speakers in the master bedroom. Is it overkill? Probably, but it sounds really good and I'm not mad about it. There's the other Era 300 and the Sonos Sub Mini down there. Oh, by the way, here's my nightstand with my Hi-Rise 3 Deluxe review video down in the description. Yes, my Apple MagSafe battery pack, which I still use. And I still have an Eve button here in the bedroom. There's basically one button to run my goodnight scene. And that's pretty much it. Also, I have a HomePod Mini here on the nightstand if I want to control it with you know who. Sonos Beam is the hub of the home theater system here in the master bedroom. And if we go into the bathroom, you'll see we still have a couple HomePod minis here on these little stands. But one of the big differences is here, these used to be Belkin Wemo switches and dimmers. I've changed all of these out. This is now a Lutron Diva Claro Claro. 
and reliability has just been way better. Also, one of my favorite automations is when an accessory is controlled. So I have an automation where is when I turn this one switch off, it turns off everything here in the master bathroom. So you'll hear the fan turn off and the other light turn off after a couple seconds. Love that automation. Great place is the bathroom because when you leave, you're turning everything off anyway. And under pretty much every sink, I have water leak sensors. That's the Akara water leak sensor. It's like the Eve water guard. If it gets wet, I get a notification in the home app and I can check to see if there's a water leak. And in case you were wondering, my wife is still using the Belkin 3-in-1 to charge her devices. She likes it. Now, if we head outside to the patio, you'll see there's a bunch of stuff. Here's actually the Yale Assure Lock 2. That review is down in the description. Maybe you'll actually get to see the pool lights. Let's try this. Turn on backyard lights. There we go. First up, I put another Akara E1 camera out here. This is great if the kids are swimming in the pool because we can keep an eye on it and it's a pan and tilt. You have to do that in the Akara app, but it's definitely a nice feature. Pair of Sonos 1SLs out here, that's one side of them. You can also see the lights in the pool are also on smart switches. Those are actually Leviton and Mera switches, different combinations, so pool turns on as well. An addition this year is actually the Flick Twist. This is a cool button. You can actually program it to play things like through Sonos. It can also control your Hue lights. It doesn't integrate directly with HomeKit, but it can control, like I said, Philips Hue, Sonos, and some other brands. I have this right here where if I click it, it will actually start playing a classical music playlist on the Sonos Move over there. And then I can actually twist it to adjust the volume. Double click to pause. So the Flick Twist, a really cool addition, especially if you have some Sonos gear. Now, if we go over to this mini fridge, we got a lot going on. So we have the other Sonos 1SL in the pair. We got the Eve Flare. Got a Sonos Move 1 and a Sonos Move 2. Unfortunately, I can't pair those together. You need a two Sonos Move 2s or two Sonos Move 1s, but really nice to just pick up, go around the pool. I did a whole review on the Sonos Move 2. You can check that out in the description. I'm testing out two Topo HomeKit Secure Video cameras. These are new, both HomeKit Secure Video, both under $100. This is a pan and tilt, which again, you need the Topo app to do that. But this one is also nice. You can actually just angle it all the way down for privacy. Also on the mini fridge, I have an Akara contact sensor. If this mini fridge is left open for more than a minute, I actually get a notification in the Akara app, which is really nice. I also have an Eve weather right here because I have an automation for that, which I'll show you in a second. I also have the Natatmo weather station and an Eve motion sensor. Yes, this is a little bit of overkill, but this is just kind of where I test stuff. But one of my automations here actually uses that Eve weather and controls my patio fans. So if it detects motion here on the patio, using that EVE motion sensor, and the temperature is over 80 degrees by the EVE weather, it will turn the patio fans on. And then I have an automation to turn them off every night at like 8 p.m. So if I come out here on the patio and it's hot, the fans will just come on automatically. Oh, I also forgot to mention I have an Akara contact sensor on my patio bedroom door. So here you can see I'll get notifications if the door is left open after a minute. And here are notifications that the mini fridge was left open. Really cool use case for contact sensors specifically. Now I still have the Eve outdoor cam there up on the barn. That is a floodlight camera, HomeKit secure video. So you don't have to pay another subscription. That works great. And if we head out this way, one of my favorite home things is the Eve Aqua. Controls this garden hose, which is great for filling up the pool. So I could say, hey Siri, turn on pool hose. And the hose is going and I have it on a timer. So after two hours, which is a good amount of time for filling the pool, that hose will turn off. Now, like I mentioned, we got solar panels this year. And of course it's an overcast day, uh, which makes for good filming outside, but not great for solar panels. We don't have batteries right now for the solar panels. We hope to upgrade and add those batteries in the near future. But for right now, any energy that is produced above what we're using goes back to the electric company. And we theoretically should not have an electric bill. We've only been doing it for about one or two whole months. This is kind of a new development. So that will be a video later on. Subscribe to the channel if you want to learn about solar panels here in Florida. This is not really smart, but this is our propane tank, which powers our gas stove and gas water heater. Here I still have two Logitech Circle View cameras, one over there and one up here. Those are HomeKit Secure Video. These are not as solid as the Logitech Circle View doorbell camera, which I have on the front door, uh, but they do okay. This is a whole home generator, which can also run off that propane tank. So if we lose power, this can at least run the house for a good amount of time if we have a full propane tank. And because I think it's really cool and one of the best uses of the action button, 
Let's open the garage one more time. Action button garage door opener. But actually we're not gonna go in there. We're actually gonna go to the front door and look at the Logitech Circle View and the main living room. If we go out here to the front of the house, I still have the Logitech Circle View video doorbell camera. I've had it for the last year and a half and it's been one of the most solid devices. I don't have to pay another subscription because it works with HomeKit Secure Video. And if someone rings it, it shows up on my phone. I get a notification. And I love that it shows up on every Apple TV that's on, so you can see who's at the door if you had the TV on. Also, when you have a doorbell cam like this one, you can choose what home pods in your house actually act as a chime. So you see here, I have a family room Ecobee, which the Ecobee thermostat actually has a speaker, acts as an AirPlay 2 destination. So I have those two act as the chime, in addition to the physical chime that the Logitech Circle View connects to. And now if we go through the front door, this is the main living room. Now we're still in decoration mode, and yes, I know that TV is too high. It's literally already in the subreddit, so you don't need to add it again. <laughs> but one of the new additions this year are the Smart Wings blinds. These are thread powered blinds. I have one here and one over the kitchen sink. And of course, these are controlled by HomeKit, and because they're thread, they do respond very quickly. I'll just tap one, and you'll see it start closing behind me. And then here with the dining room blinds, tap that and you'll see that one starts closing. You can group these together and also have an automation that they open at sunrise and close at sunset. You can also open halfway or part of the way. And of course you can use Siri, open living room blinds. Again, they're really fast to respond because they're thread powered and they're pretty inexpensive when it comes to HomeKit smart shades. So really love those. Now, when it comes to recording, I have that floor lamp in the family room, but I actually have this here in the kitchen to let people know I'm recording. So if I run one of my filming scenes like Video Blue, you'll actually see this lamp turn on red. This way, if someone's in the kitchen, they'll know I'm recording with that. This is actually the Maris table lamp, pretty inexpensive. I can change the colors also here in the home app and turn it on or off just like that. Then when I'm done recording, it turns off so they know I'm done. Now, one of my favorite HomeKit buttons, I actually have it hidden behind this little lip next to the fridge. You'll see there, that's actually an Akara mini switch or HomeKit button and I have a program for a single click and double click. If I double click it, it runs my evening scene and you'll see all the lights turn off here in the kitchen and main living room and it will actually lower the blinds as well. But if I'm entering the kitchen in the morning, I could just reach around and click this button once. It turns on all the lights here in the kitchen living room. Love that hidden button. You can't even see it. It's right behind this frame next to the fridge. Here in the big living room, I do have all smart switches. Some are in three-way configurations with dumb switches. These are my Leviton dimmers right now and historically have given me some of the biggest issues with connectivity. I'd like to switch these out with Lutron, but there's a lot of switches, so I haven't done that yet. I'm also using a variety of switches. I know this drives some people crazy, but these are the Maris switches, non-dimmers, but they do work in three-way configurations with a dumb switch on the other side. I have a whole video about light switches. Again, I'll link it above and in the description. And one automation is here for the pantry. I actually have a motion sensor in there, which I'll show you in a second. But when I open the door, as soon as it detects motion, you'll see the pantry light turns on. Yes, there's a lot of stuff in the pantry too. Right here's another Hue motion sensor, just one of the fastest responding motion sensors. And this light will turn off after five minutes once it stops detecting motion. Over here on the coffee bar, I actually have my coffee grinder here. This is a burr grinder. Having a fussy way to make coffee is the best way. And this is actually a Maris smart plug and the grinder is plugged into that. And the reason why is there was one time where I overflowed the beans in this and I never wanted it to happen again. So you turn this on with a shortcut and two minutes after it turns on, it automatically turns off. So it never overflows. Over here are some of the switches for the patio. I have a Maris in a three-way configuration, another Leviton switch. That powers the fans and can lights out there. And yes, even in the guest bathroom, HomePod mini on a little shelf, just for thread and home networking reasons, but you know, if you wanna play music in here, you could do that too. Now again, yes, I know this TV is too high. I also have this, this is called the, uh, the Wi-Fi Porter. Scan that QR code with your iPhone and you can connect to my Wi-Fi. I guess you could try to scan it even now in the video, but if you have an Android phone, NFC on this little symbol also connects you to the Wi-Fi. That's great for guests. Sonos Arc in here with the TV. And of course, Sonos Sub Gen 3. One of my biggest regrets is not running ethernet for the Sonos subs. These are the only ones I have connectivity issues with. I don't know why, because the Wi-Fi router is literally right there. I don't know what the issue is, but my Sonos Sub Mini 2 has issues too sometimes. Oh, and if you didn't catch it, HomePod Mini here in the kitchen on a shelf, again, for smart home controls and for music. A bunch of other smart switches here as well, Levitons mainly. So those are the updates for my smart home into 2024, new buttons, some smart locks, light strips. And if you wanna learn about that automation, like toggling the garage door opener for the action button, I have a whole video on some of those easy automations. I'll put that link 
Actually, they probably all have to be down in the description because I could only put five videos up here and I've already done plenty. But if you have any questions about my smart home setup, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. I also have a video on the entire internet setup, which I recently upgraded to two gig service with the whole Unify Ubiquity setup. I'll put that video down in the description as well. Plus all the products and smart home devices that I've talked about are all down there as well. Looking forward to even more Matter devices and other smart home stuff coming next year. And of course, I'll do videos on all of it. So see you then. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.